Hey, what's up everybody? It's Kellen here from Start Your Systems and welcome back to Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game five, where today we're gonna be playing the 2023 Anaheim One Supercross track, the customer edition of it, I should say, in the game and talking about the upcoming 2023 uh, Monster Energy Supercross season. But particularly today, we're gonna be talking about the 250 West class and kind of previewing that series because we do actually know for the most part who is gonna be racing 250 West this year, which is something that doesn't always uh, happens so kind of exciting a little bit something that we don't always get to do and uh, we're going to preview it for you guys here today if you're looking for some 450 thoughts and opinions that will be dropping tomorrow uh, so you guys can follow up with that at a later date as we get ready to drop the gate on Anaheim and uh, really this 2023 season so let's break it down a little bit and talk about this 250 West division like I said for the most part just about everything has been announced where normally we get to Anaheim one and most teams haven't really officially said what their teams are going to be. And in the past, they've even uh, some teams have even had their riders ride press day that will be racing the opposite coast later on at a different date. So um, kind of nice that we got more or less real announcements this time. But obviously, the the headline in the 250 West Division this year is going to be <clears throat> the number 18 of Jet Lawrence. Most people probably know him as number one at this point. But it is the number 18 because he is your reigning 250 East champion. And he's not moving up to the 450 class just yet. But he wants to win both coasts before he does. So he is going west this year. And he will be headlining this class trying to go back to back in 250 titles. But obviously win the opposite coast before he moves up to a 450 full time in pro motocross. Uh, Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki is putting Austin Forkner and Cameron McAdoo, which is their... Uh, Really, they're two most successful Supercross riders on the team. Obviously, Joe Shimoda's kind of been carrying the flag for them much of last year, but uh, Forkner and McAdoo both won races in 2022. Forkner is the winningest 250 rider of all time without a 250 Supercross title to his name, um, so he's hoping to end that this year. Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing uh, just actually announced today that Levi Kitchen and Styles Robertson will be their two guys going west. We kind of already assumed that to be the case based on some rumblings of what was going to happen. And then Kitchen himself actually announced on Tuesday that he would be going west. But now Robertson has also been confirmed as the second rider there. Robertson jumping over from Rockstar Energy Husqvarna to join Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing. And of course, Kitchen uh, going to be trying to make a full... I guess like kind of debut at this point. He only got two Supercross races under his belt last year before he crashed out of Supercross, would eventually return for Pro Motocross and do quite well. So be interesting to see because this is the first time in a long time Star is kind of not having, I would say like super star level talent on both coasts, um, really not on, on either coast. Like their team is not what it really used to be in terms of uh, title favorites coming in. But uh, maybe these guys step up. Maybe Kitchen and Robertson have something to say about this title in 2023. Uh, Red Bull KTM, of course, only two riders on that team. And with Tom Vial being uh, fresh to Supercross, he will definitely be going east. So that puts Max Voland on the west. And uh, he's looking to kind of like Kitchen, really just get his feet under him with Supercross. He's only got four main event starts to his career. And 2022 Supercross went disastrous, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, Rockstar Energy Husqvarna has probably the biggest threat in terms of recent success to Jet Lawrence for a title, and that is RJ Hampshire. Hampshire won the St. Louis Supercross last year and finished second in the 250 East standings to Jet Lawrence as well. So I have to believe that Hampshire will also be a bit of a factor. And Troy Lee Designs Red Bull Gas Gas is going to put Michael Moseman East, which means Pierce Brown will be the West Rider. So as a reiteration of kind of like your key factory talent riders, it is going to be Jet Lawrence, Austin Forkner, Gammon McAdoo, uh, Levi Kitchen, Styles Robertson, Max Voland, RJ Hampshire, and Pierce Brown. There is, of course, also the Suzuki factory programs, uh, Bar X and HEP Suzuki. Bar X sounds like they're going to have Ty Masterpool, Derek Drake, and Robbie Wageman all race west. And HEP Suzuki will have Dylan Schwartz also racing west. But uh, I don't really look at kind of any of those guys as ones that I would maybe assume could win some races or challenge for a title this year. But they will do well. I'm um, looking to see how they do uh, in terms of top 10 results, maybe a couple top fives for some of them. Going to be interesting to see. But like I said, I, I think most of the star power resides within those factory teams that I mentioned. A couple outsiders that I did really want to quickly uh, gloss over is uh, Firepower Honda has Max Anstey dropping back down to a 250 for the first time in a decade to race Supercross. 
Um, he will be number 63 on that team, and he just won the Australian SX2 Championship as well. So he has a little bit of uh, you know talent coming in with that. And then his teammate will be Wilson Todd, who is going to be making his Supercross debut in America. So that's going to be exciting to see another Australian face uh, coming up and trying to make a go of it in U.S. Supercross after he did some GPs. Kind of looks like the Lawrence brothers a little bit, right? Uh, Club MX uh, FXR Yamaha which is Muckoff FXR Club of Mex Yamaha. It's a long team name. It's going to have Phil Nicoletti and Enzo Lopes, two guys that were pretty solid last year on the East before uh, Nicoletti got hurt. Lopes finished out fifth in 250 East. But again, I don't necessarily look at those guys as, as perennial winners or championship favorites, but we'll see. Uh, Moto Concepts Racing Honda will have Mitchell Oldenburg and Brazilian Supercross champion Anthony Rodriguez on their team. Those will also both be racing West, just like uh, with Club and Firepower. Those guys all racing west, like I mentioned. And another little kind of like outsider chance to talk about them a little bit is the AEO Power Sports KTM team of Derek Kelly and Joshua Varese, because those are some more guys that we should expect to see in the top 10. Um, can't imagine that we see them too far away from that based on the results that we saw last year. So I think we'll see kind of a smattering of that group uh, somewhere and thereabouts in the top 10 between these about 15 riders that I've mentioned. So let's talk about championship and who we think is really going to uh, contend for this. I really do think it's it's going to look strangely a lot like 250 East did last year. This is kind of a lot of the East riders from last year jumping over to race West. You have Jet Lawrence and you have RJ Hampshire who finished 1-2 in the series. You have Cameron McAdoo who uh, at one point held the red plate in 250 East when he won the second round of the year at Arlington and then uh, unfortunately was injured in press day at St. Louis, so that kind of pulled him out of the, the championship hunt. You have Austin Forkner who as you may remember, collided with Jet Lawrence in Arlington, and that broke his collarbone. But he came back later in the year and won the Foxborough Supercross, beating Jet Lawrence straight up. So um, you have to imagine both McAdoo and Forkner should easily contend uh, in the mix for this championship. Uh, Pierce Brown, nobody on planet Earth probably remembers that Pierce Brown finished third in 250SX East last year. So uh, basically you have your top three from 250 East last year in Lawrence, uh, Hampshire, and Brown all racing West this year, which is a little bit odd and kind of an anomaly but it's just the way that the coasts are kind of breaking down this year um you know max boland we, we have no idea what to expect from him i just hope that he finally starts actually making main events and putting in solid results because like i said in 2022 it was not good he, he was injured um in the first race of the year i think it was in minneapolis he crashed in like the first turn of the main event and hurt his shoulder so he only had a 22nd place result on the docket for him uh, at all last year, but some of you might remember he actually did show up to the Atlanta sh uh, showdown, the East West showdown at Atlanta Motor Speedway and didn't qualify. Uh, only the fast 20 riders from uh, practice would qualify for the main races, and that was a little weird because it was kind of raining, so they were taking it. I think they only did one session, and Volan got a worse track than some of his competitors, but he's still just straight up, he's on a factory KTM, and he did not qualify. Uh, for the night show so that was really really odd but I think he did redeem himself with a very very solid uh, AMA Pro Motocross Championship in my opinion like he was consistently hovering inside of the top 10 right around the top 5 on occasion and um, I, I do think that he'll figure Supercross out I just hope that it's not as disastrous as it was in 2022 and when he does I do think that he factors right in with some of the names I've already mentioned here so um, you know, we'll have to see. I think you, of all the other people that I mentioned outside of that group, would have to say that like Max Anstey and Mitchell Oldenburg are two faces that we could look at as, you know, like kind of you shrug your shoulders a little bit. Like Oldenburg, uh, very, very talented rider, has contended for many, many podiums before, never won a main event, but has been, you know, kind of close and up in the front and former factory Yamaha rider and, and did really well in WSX and, and things like that. So, I really do think that Oldenburg is, a, at worst, going to maybe get a podium or two this year. At best, maybe gets his first win, but we'll have to see about that. And then Max Anstey is a complete question mark because it's not like he was really, really awesome necessarily on, on a 450 in Supercross last year. Um, but if you go back to when he did race a 250 in Supercross, he was a legit talent and a guy that a lot of uh, teams and, and other people were looking at before he eventually went back to, he's, he's obviously from the UK, he went back to Europe and raced MXGP for a decade um, and now finds himself back in the USA full time and giving it a go in Supercross just like he has the last couple of years and now he's going to be on a 250 which is kind of weird but he never pointed out of the series so why not give it a chance and see 
maybe if he's like a, a fringe title contender. I personally believe that this is Jet versus the rest, though. Um, I don't see how you slice it any other way based on the complete season that Jet had last year. He has still not been injured of any sort of like really big shape or form uh, since he crashed out of the Anaheim Supercross back in 2020. This is going to be the first time he's been racing in Angel Stadium since that gnarly, gnarly night where he was battling Dylan Ferrandez for the win of the main event in just his third career start and went over the bars massively in the whoops on the last lap of the race. So there might be a little bit of, you know, some jitters maybe to get past for him to be back in this stadium. But uh, once he's past that, I don't see how you can say that he is not the clear favorite in this series. Uh, you know, I do think that Forkner, McAdoo, Hampshire, they will all have something to say about it. I don't think that they're not going to win or not going to challenge Jet. But <clears throat> based on what we've seen in the last year and a half with him, it's, it's pretty tough to bet against him. So... I would put Jet as my number one, and then kind of really like two, three, four, in any order that you really want to put him. Hampshire, Forkner, McAdoo, I would I would say is 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 going to be that group, uh, guys that can win main events, guys that should take it to Jet Lawrence on occasion. Um, but for whatever reason, I don't necessarily think that you can put any of them above Jet Lawrence or any of them above each other because. Yes, Hampshire finished second in the series last year, but McAdoo and Forkner both went out with injuries. And yes, Forkner and McAdoo both won races last year, but so did Hampshire. So shouldn't Hampshire be back above them? And then you have Forkner with 12 career wins. So he's got so much, you know, history and pedigree and all this, but then he keeps getting hurt. So he's never really fully like back to 100% or we don't really know what version of him we're going to get. So there's plenty of question marks around each of them. And, um, you know, Hampshire was dealing with the brand new iteration of the KTM Husky chassis last year. So to still get second in the series while going through the, the struggles with that is, is, you know, somewhat remarkable. But I don't know that it necessarily means that a year under his belt on that machine that he's going to blast forward and suddenly have great results on it. I still think that they're going to find uh, areas that they need to improve on that bike and probably struggle to really go through the whoops is going to be the main thing. But I do know that the whoops are going to be a little bit smaller this year. And another thing about this weekend is that it is currently raining quite significantly in California. I don't expect this weekend to be a mud race, but regardless of how well they have the track covered or, or what have you, uh, there is still going to be a little bit of kind of dampness to the, to the surface. It's going to get a little more rutted than we're typical typically used to with Anaheim and that that might throw all these guys off their game after training in California for the last month and a half or two on hard pack blue groove stuff suddenly they come out and have a soft and tricky and technical Anaheim one so um, you know it's, it's a bunch of things like that that could throw all these guys way off their game uh, but for me I, I just don't see a reason why you can't put Jet Lawrence as the top and the the three guys that I mentioned behind him behind that so you know, maybe we see Pierce Brown break out this year to get third in the championship last year and only have a couple podiums in his back pocket was a little weird, but he's been very fast before. He was one of, I think he qualified fastest in like his second or third ever Supercross race. So he has raw speed to back up his talent for sure. Um, the question really with him is like, how well is he adapting? As Gas Gas has now moved over to that new KTM Husqvarna chassis that we saw last year, Gas Gas has done that as well. So maybe the new bike doesn't work for him, or maybe it works awesome. Like, I think that you could make a case for why Brown could be suddenly bursting up towards those guys and winning races this year, or you can make a case of why he's going to struggle to get in the top five because he's not comfortable on that bike. Um, I think you have two sides of the coin with that one. You have two sides of the coin with Max Voland, who has a lot of talent but hasn't shown any of it in Supercross, really. Um, yeah, like I said, just kind of a lot of question marks. It's going to be... Interesting to see what I would say is the midfield battle this year between, you know, Voland, Brown, Anstey, uh, Enzo Lopes, and Phil Nicoletti getting in there with Mitchell Oldenburg. Uh, probably to some shape or form have like a Derek Drake mixed in there with Robbie Wageman. We know Wageman's really good. He gets a lot of top 10 results, even on the, the West Coast series, which is normally a little bit more stacked than the East. And another thing about the series this year that's kind of peculiar is that normally speaking, the East series was shorter. Uh, with only nine rounds versus 10 rounds on the West. Like last year, for example, there were six rounds to start the year on the West. And then, um, you know, we had Denver, Salt, uh, Seattle, the showdown and the showdown at Salt Lake to make it 10 West Coast rounds. But this year it's only nine and there are 10 East Coast rounds. So a little bit shorter of a series. It's obviously not massive, but it is one of those things that you also kind of look maybe a little bit more at the guys that start off strong as being your consistent title contenders right away. 
Um, and we know that Jet Lawrence knows how to start off strong in these series. So I, I, I can see why he would just come out and win this weekend and uh, make it quite easy math for the rest of the year. Um, I want to talk about the Monster Energy Star Yamaha guys a little bit here at the end of this video, just because, like I said, when I talked about them before, this is the first year where Star, in my opinion, comes into the year with not really a whole lot of thunder as they packed before. Like, you knew coming into last year, uh, Christian Craig is probably going to be pretty darn good and maybe, you know, be a title contender. Nate Thrasher winning the East-West Showdown was a bit of a surprise, I think, but uh, you know that he can win and is capable of it. Levi Kitchen and Styles Robertson have no wins. And in fact, Robertson, I believe, only has two podiums to his credit, whereas Kitchen only has two starts to his credit. So it's a really weird situation that they're in. They have so much uh, talent coming behind this group in the amateurs right now, obviously with Hayden Deegan, uh, Daxton Bennick, and, and other names like that. So they had to force some guys out. Obviously, Christian Craig could have come back and defended his title, but he elected to sign a two-year deal with Husqvarna and move up. Uh, Colt Nichols was forced out of the class, as was Justin Cooper, so they are both on 450s now. And yeah, suddenly you you have a team of uh, Kitchen, Robertson, uh, Jordan Smith joins the program. He'll be racing East. You have uh, Nick Romano and the aforementioned Nate Thrasher on a team of guys that I would not pick to win the titles this year. I just really would not. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do this year because for a team that has been arguably the best 250 program of kind of the decade uh they're maybe coming in with the least pack of a punch ever um that i can remember or not ever but you know at least in this last decade or so um so who knows maybe being on a star yamaha does wonderful things with styles robertson and suddenly he is a guy that can win a bunch of races as well and we have four or five extra you know names to add to the bin of title rivals and such this year but i have to see it to believe it i don't look at Styles as someone that could win races just yet and I have no idea with Levi Kitchen because he hasn't finished many races yet I'm um, going to be exciting to watch like I said that midfield battle with all those guys that I mentioned it's who knows um, some guys might jump up and grab podiums maybe sneak in a win here and there but I think a lot of it's going to be scrapping it out to try to get into the top five behind Lawrence Forkner McAdoo and Hampshire but we'll see we will see. So I got Jet Lawrence to win this weekend, and I got Jet Lawrence to win the title. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Happy to go down there and discuss with you guys. But thanks for tuning in and watching another video here on Start Your Systems. We'll see you in the next one. So long for now.